Riva, the god of destiny, king of the eight bestial gods, has three eyes. It is said that one sees the past, one sees the future, and one sees the present. And the three dice that Riva casts. They decide the birth and death of all humankind. Uh, especially crying little girls. When a die of fate is cast, the results can be quick prosperity or grave misfortune. Grave misfortune owns little girls. Uh, even a life in desire straits can be completely turned around, unless you're a little girl. God doesn't like little girls. The legends claim that Riva dwells in a wondrous stronghold. They call this the Palace of Paradise, where no crying little girls may enter. The Tower of Fortune. Hi everyone, this is Autopostrophe. Let's check out uh, Shiren the Wanderer, the Tower of Fortune, and the Dice of Fate on Nintendo Switch. Settings. Text size small. Oh no, I'm blind. Well, actually, I have a feeling that might be. <laughs> Maybe unintended consequences of doing that. Touching settings. Okay, I'm just gonna leave those as they are. What's this? Oh, ooh. What's. Oh. Okay, whatever. Are you sure? Yes. At the magic castle of the desert, we prevented the rebirth of a demonic god. We then searched for our next adventure. My partner is the wanderer, Shiren. He travels the world in search of mysteries of all kinds. And I'm the storytelling ferret, Koppa. One day I was lost somewhere in the mountains far from civilization. I stumbled across a small village. It was there I would meet the youngster that would cause us to challenge the god of destiny, Riva. Are there any crying little girls there? You shall be cursed, little girl! Oh my, what are you people doing in the middle of the mountains here? Have you gotten lost? It's been so long since I've seen an unfamiliar face. This place is called Inori Village. You're welcome to make yourselves at home and take it easy while you're here. Whoa, it's a guy in a weird outfit walk uh, walking a fox. Hey, Squirt, ignoring the crack about my partner's outfit, I'm not a fox, I'm a ferret. Whoa, this fox, uh, I mean ferret, it talks. Animals, birds, and fish can all communicate in their own languages. You humans just can't understand them. Wow, is that so? I didn't realize that. I guess I got schooled by a ferret. Oya said that she'd marry me when I got older. I won't lose to uh, Jirokichi. Hey, you there. I'm the traveling fortune teller, Madame Ateska. This is part of my disguise. Don't concern yourself too much. Some people have predestined fates. Others do not. All events are either coincidences or inevitabilities. If Riva does not cast the die, someone else will. And who knows what the results may be. By the way, your fortune says that you have trouble with women. Be careful. Oh, are you wandering the world looking for mysterious things? Good for you, I guess. <laughs> You must be here to research that legend our village has passed down since ancient times. What? You've never heard of the legend? Well, I shouldn't be the one to tell you. It's a secret legend after all. <laughs> Oya has been sick in bed for a while now. I hope she gets better so she can teach me how to play Cat's Cradle. Oya and Jirokichi have been very close since they were small. Those two really do make a good couple. The God of Destiny is so cruel. Why would he try to and separate a couple like that? What did they do to deserve this? Oh, you never know how people are at home. They may be complete jerks or idiots. 
My name is uh, Kojiruta, but you can call me Kojiruta the Great. I'll tell you one thing: people have sort of defined, have a defined role that must that they must play. Tadpoles become frogs, cows become cows, dragonfly nymphs become dragonflies. No matter where they go and what they do, they are born into these roles and they cannot escape them. You farmers or wanderers who just keep yourselves in the corner of the world and live out your lives. Do you see what I mean? I'll offer to make you servants. This is a once in a lifetime chance to change your role. Nah. What? You don't want to be my servant? Hm, you're such fools. I have no time for you. Do as you wish. I'm the wealthiest person in this village. Although this is a small village with very little, I'm still the best. Let me tell you one thing. There are two types of people in this world. People born with luck, and people born without it. Even if you've had bad luck and nothing ever goes your way, you shouldn't ever give up. People with bad luck can work hard until a bit of luck that they can use comes their way. Maybe. Kids these days give up so easily. I say men should be more aggressive, more wanton with their desires. With my catnip juice, you'll be energized, invigorated, hustled and bustled, and you'll have dynamic motivation. Unfortunately, I'm out right now, but if you really want it, I suppose I can make some more for you. <laughs> if you get hungry, you can eat on a kitty. That's common sense. You need food to survive. Everyone knows that. If your fullness drops to zero, your health will begin depleting, and you'll eventually collapse from starvation. If you don't have any giddy, you can eat grass to survive. Supposedly, climbing the Tower of Fortune and meeting Riva, the god of destiny, will change your life. What do you think? Will my retirement life be rosy with Riva's power? By the way, is your life rose-colored? What? You're satisfied with your fate? This village has an old legend. Beyond the cave at the village's edge is a mysterious world where hermits live. It's a mystical place. I'd like to see it with my own eyes, but those who go there vanish, never to return. Have you heard the tower in the land of hermits can change your destiny? It's the god Reva's Tower of Fortune. It's just a fairy tale the old people tell here. It's not true. They're mixing up their old tales with actual history. Even if that tower really does exist, the tales also said that it's a deadly tower full of monsters. No human will be able to go in there and come back out alive. It's best if you just ignore these stories. <laughs> well, but that dude's a bummer. Arrows, rocks, talismans, and staves can be set and you'll be able to use them with L. It's a breeze to set up. Select an item you want to set from your backpack, then pick set and you're done. There are other convenient shortcuts. Go to other and check the hints section to see other uh, short con shortcut controls. This place is a training facility, and it's where first-timers go to train before going into dungeons. Oh, is she then? Uh, this is your first time here. Hello, I'll be your guide. Nice to meet you. You can't bring your items or gatan, so I'll hold on to them for you. That way, if you collapse, they'll be safe with me. Oh, also, the items you pick up can be used freely here, but you won't be allowed to take them outside. And when you clear the training area for the first time, I'll give you a reward. Now you have to train. So what do you want to train today? Finding the stairs. Finding the stairs is what you want to practice? Yeah, sure. Then I'll just hold on to your things right now. Go, go, go. Let's go. Training facility. Once you enter a dungeon, look for the stairs. That's your exit. If you find monsters along the way, press A button to attack. The chop. You and the monsters both take one turn at a time. If you don't move, the monsters also won't move, so you can stay calm and plot out your actions. If there's a monster out of range, pressing the A button press the A button to swing. This will make it move a tile closer. You can go to the next floor from the stairs. You can't backtrack floors, so make sure you're ready to leave.
Wow, congrats! You passed with flying colors! I'll return your belongings. This is your first time including training, so I'll have a little word for you. Here you go. Mm, chapter text and scroll. What do you say? Want to continue? Yeah, sure. That's a moving diagonally. Moving diagonally is what you want to practice? Yeah, sure. Did you know you can move diagonally? Hold the R button while moving to move diagonally automatically. At the corner of water terrain, you can move diagonally to get through it. Remember this technique. Moving horizontally and vertically to the stairs will take four turns, but moving diagonally, you'll be there in two. Try to evade monsters and get to the stairs without being attacked once. When avoiding monsters, try diagonal movements to use as few turns as possible. Targe. Effective dashing is what you want to practice. Yes, let's do it. I don't want to be ineffective at dashing. Just being dashing is not enough. Hold the B button while moving to make uh, you run until you hit something. Try dashing upwards. Oh, that's fast. While you are dashing, monsters will also move at the same speed towards you. Dash to the left to race with the monsters for a better illustration. Don't panic and dash when you're in danger. Always think before you act. That ain't happening over here. Huh? Turning in place. Okay. Hold the Y button and press the direction button to change the direction you are facing. Turning in place won't use up any turns, so you don't have to worry. If enemies are adjacent, press the Y button to face the enemy automatically. It's a nice feature, so use it often. By the way, when you step on the stairs, you'll be asked if you want to proceed. This is also under the f under feet in the menu. If you don't select Advance, you don't have to go back the way you came uh, to stay on the same floor. Become a transient if I use that. What do you say? Yes, it's continual. I'm dealing with hunger. Hmm. I think most of us are doing that right now. As you spend turns in the dungeon, you'll get more and more hungry, and your fullness will deplete. To see how hungry you are, press the X button to check your fullness in the uh, bottom window. My fullness is 10. Sheedon's hunger is causing him to get dizzy. If your fullness reaches zero, you'll lose HP with each action. Eat only get it to replenish your fullness.
Wow, congrats. You passed with flying colors. I'll return your belongings. This is your first... Yeah, okay, great. Yeah. Pinning staff. Using the map. The room is wide and you can't line yourself up with the... Uh, with the entrance to find the passage. Don't fret. Press the minus button to view the map. You'll see a purple grid that juts into the room. There, there's a... That's the passageway entrance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Ordinary stick. Rooms and passages allow you to pass through will be filled in on the map automatically. You'll be able to see the position of items or stairs easily. Open the menu with the X button and select Scout. Press the direction buttons to see the room. You can see items or monsters in the room that are far away. There's a message log? Hold the B button while pressing Y to view messages displayed in the past. You can see what happened in the previous turns this way. Wow, congrats, you passed with flying colors. I'll return your belongings. Mm-hmm. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, give me something. Diet shield? What? Is there a, is there a, a fatty shield? Uh, is that a keto shield? Oh, oh wow, there's a ton of stuff here. I didn't realize it, it was like another full menu. If you take damage, your HP will regenerate on its own as you keep walking. So you don't have to panic even if you don't have any healing items. If you want to heal your HP without walking, press the B and A button simultaneously. Turns will continue to pass just as you as you do when you move, so keep an eye on those pesky monsters. Fortunately for wanderers, a monster's HP doesn't regenerate on its own. If a monster has the upper hand, you can always run and heal and strike once the situation has turned favorable. Mm-hmm. Oh boy, it's worth doing it just to get all this stuff. Equipment is your friend. Now I'm stuck in training hell. <laughs> Equipping weapons and shields will raise your attack and defensive respectively. First try to defeat a monster without equipping anything. Once you've obtained a shield, you won't enjoy its benefits unless you equip it. Go to the backpack in the menu and then select Equip for Shields. Once you obtain a weapon... Oh, thank you, great. Yeah. Nice. Bracelets are like weapons and shields in the sense that you have to equip them in order in order to benefit. They usually have special effects. 
So find one that fills the right void to make your adventuring easier. Ooh, oh, book my hand. Yeah, great. Yeah. Thanks. My goodness. This is like the most basic of basic. But I guess, you know, this might be the first game you've ever played, I suppose. And really, uh, you know, if you're writing tutorials, you should sort of write them that way. Because you really never know what somebody's experience level is. Projectiles in range. You can use arrows or rocks to attack monsters from a distance. I'll explain arrows first. Arrows fly straight and true in the direction you're facing. Face the monster, then select wood arrow from your backpack menu and select shoot. Projectiles can be set and be used simply by pressing the L button. To set an arrow type, go to your backpack menu, then select set for the item of your choice. Rocks will fly in a parabola in uh, parabola in the direction you're facing. They don't fly as far as arrows, but you can lob them over walls and, or allies to hit monsters. Face the monster, then select rock from your backpack menu to, and then pick throw to throw it. I wouldn't expect this rock to do that much damage. If you find yourself facing a powerful enemy, weaken it with rocks before engaging it directly. Just like real life. Use grass or throw it. Let me explain the most basic way to use grass. Herb grass. Uh, uh, Otogita. Uh, Otogidiso. Herb, herb, Otogidiso, and heal grass can be used to heal your HP. Well, to use them, go to the backpack menu and pick the grass you want, then use use. When you're about to collapse, it's better to use items to heal rather than waiting for your HP to re regenerate. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, I actually already did that. But okay. Use dragon grass to breathe fire in the direction you're facing. This will insta kill most monsters. Sleepy, uh, using sleepy grass will make you fall asleep, hence the name. For grass that inflicts negative effects like this, don't use it on yourself. Throw it at enemies. No matter what grass you use, it will always replenish your fullness a little. Excluding grass that's dangerous to use, you should always use extra grass you have rather than just throw it away. Look at that fast loading. Are we on a next-gen console? Is this... Is this the Xbox Series or PlayStation 5? Nope, just the Switch. Stage can be waved to shoot magic bullets. Take that paralysis staff and wave it at a monster. 
To wave a staff, go to your backpack, select the staff, then select hit wave. Hitting a target with a magic bolt from a paralysis staff will cause it to be completely immobilized. However, if you attack it or use items on it, it will start to move again, so keep that in mind. Instead of attacking it, you can always just leave it there and scamper away. You can only wave a staff a set number of times, but staves with zero uses left can be thrown to cause the same effect. Try taking that transient staff and throwing it at the monster on the left. The transient staff will warp the target above the stairs and then immobilize them. You'll have to deal with them somehow before you can progress to the next floor, so be mindful of that. Wow. Okay. <laughs> I almost kept saying that same thing over and over again. Crescent Katana. Effective scroll usage. Gosh, is there another page after this too? My goodness. Scrolls are used by reading them. Take that vacuum slash scroll over there and read it. It will deal damage to all monsters in the room. Select backpack in the menu and then choose read on your on a scroll of your choice. A fear scroll can be read to inflict a phrase status on all monsters adjacent to you. Try using it if you're getting surrounded. Reading Slumber Scroll will put all monsters in the room to sleep. However, after a few turns, they'll all wake up and be powered up, so be careful. You can try to defeat them in their sleep, but if you can't, it's better to just get out of there. Level up quite a, quite a lot, so I'll unlock some more kinds of training. What do you say? Want to continue? Oh boy, what else do we have? Wow, we have two more pages. Well, three total. Ah, corners are your friends. Ah, just keep training. What's the harm in learning? Unlike water terrain, you... unlike water terrain, you can't skirt past wall co wall corners by moving diagonally. You can't attack through the corner of a wall. Go ahead and try. However, arrows or staves that shoot bullets can't attack beyond a corner of a wall. Try shooting the arrow from there.
that also means that monster arrows and magic bolts can also reach you. Passageway duels. Oh, I think we're going to spend this first 45 minutes just doing the training. When fighting two or more monsters, your basic strategy should be run into a passageway. In a passageway, you can fight the monsters one at a time, meaning you'll only get attacked once per turn. in pots. You can put items inside a uh, preservation pot for storage. Normally you can only carry 24 items, but multiple items in a pot are only considered as one item. If you keep your items in the pot, you can walk around with 24 or more items than usual. Inside the pot, inside out of the pot will be rotten. But it wasn't much. If you keep your onigiri inside a pot, you don't have to worry about them rotting. You should carry your onigiri inside a preservation pot whenever possible. A heal pot is an item you use to you open to use. Open it to recover all your HP. But every time you open it, the number of use that it has left will decrease. Use it wisely. Turning talismans. Talismans are items you use by throwing them, just like grass or depleted saves. Talismans affect the monsters that was hit and the monsters that are next to it. One talisman can turn the tide against a throng of monsters. your HP, it re reduces your strength too? How cruel! Some traps or monster abilities will poison you and reduce your strength. 
When your strength decreases, the damage you deal will also decrease. Beware of poison. You can check your current strength at the bottom window of the menu. Press the X button to open the menu to check it out. Use Antidote Grass to fully restore your strength. You can use it right away or use it when your strength has been further decreased. Using Strength Grass will, uh, has added bonus of increasing the max value of your strength by one. However, when you use it, your strength and uh, uh, when your strength isn't max, it will only restore one strength. Try using the antidote grass to recover uh, your strength first. This strength bracelet has the effect of increasing your strength. While you have it equipped, you will gain three strength. Wow, congrats, you passed with flying colors. I'll return your belongings. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Plain targe. Unidentified items. When you see a generic name like red grass, it means that you don't know the real name of the item. We call these items unidentified. Unidentified grass can be identified when you use it. However, that grass has been consumed. The next time you get the same item, you'll display the true name. Uh, its true name will be displayed. Hmm, actually, herb. Well, well, well. Ah, oh, poison. Oh. There is a way to identify your unidentified items without using them. Read an identify scroll or put it inside an identity pot to figure out the identified item's name. Sadly, to extract the items from inside an identity pot, you'll have to throw you'll have to throw throw it against a wall to break it open. and blessings. Eh, boy, there's a whole lot to this game. Items like dragon grass with an X mark means the item is sealed. Sealed items can't be used red or waved, so be careful. An X system scroll can be used to lift the seals. You should always carry one around in case a precious item gets sealed. Exorcism pot can also lift seals. Try inserting a sealed item into the exorcism pot. Oh yeah, items inside an exorcism pot can only be removed by throwing the pot against the wall and uh, breaking it.
Next are items like Dragon Grass with a bell mark. Uh, this means the item is blessed, let me explain. Blessed weapons deal more damage than usual. But shields reduce more damage than usual. But scrolls gain one extra use. Assume that for other items, their effects is doubled when blessed. It'll make status effects last twice as long, deal double damage, uh, check it out for yourself. Unlike a sealed item, blessed items will lose that status after continued usage. Hmm, equipment upgrades. Even if the equipment has the same name, they sometimes have different stats. For example, use an ordinary stick and an ordinary stick plus seven, which has upgraded attack power. I place both on the ground so you can check the damage yourself. and shield is called an upgrade value. Upgrade values can be gained by using a blacksmith services or by using certain scrolls. You can plate your equipment with plate, uh, plating scroll to prevent rust from decreasing uh, its upgrade value. If you intend to use the equipment long term, I suggest you plate it ASAP. One more thing, when weapons or shields are sealed, their upgrade value is nullified until you lift the seal. Even if you create powerful equipment, you should still always be on guard. That's right, on the guard. A 
Anointing cursed items. You can occasionally acquire cursed equipment. Items like a cursed katana with a skull mark are cursed. When you equip cursed items, you cannot unequip or exchange anymore. The curses can be removed with an exorcism scroll. Items with a question mark in their names can be cursed, sealed, blessed, or nothing at all. You just don't know. It'll be identified when you equip it. This is just a practice run, so go ahead and equip that one. That's a strip trap over there. Step on it and your equipment will all be removed. It's normally annoying. But it can actually remove cursed equipment too. You can occasionally use trick tricks to take advantage of the traps. First items can't normally be unequipped, but aside from that, they are no different from their normal form. Sometimes it may be alright just to go ahead and equip a cursed item. Equipment synthesis. Use a synthesis pot to synthesize weapons or shields with each other. Synthesizing can create powerful weapons and or shields that can help you crush your enemies. Take that katana and dull gold edge on the ground. Try synthesizing them. First put the katana into the synthesis pot, then put the dull gold edge. The order is important. The first weapon you put in will gain abilities from the synthesis. Once the synthesis is complete, throw the pot against the wall to get the contents out. Added abilities on equipment will be shown on page 2 of their description. Let's see if the katana gained the ability rust proof from the dull gold edge in the description. Standard, uh, standard weapon that is common, wanderer gear. One warning here. Equipment that is sealed will have its abilities nullified until you lift the seal. Never get overconfident in the mis in the mystery dungeon, no matter how good your equipment may be. Peaches? What the heck? Peaches are items that can be eaten to replenish your fullness and give additional benefits. For example, a hard peach can be eaten to temporarily give you additional defense. If you carry peaches on adventures, they will grow more and more ripe. As it ripens, it'll have different effects. For example, a peach can replenish your strength. Ripening a peach will further turn it into a juicy peach. Eating that will give you enduring status, which allows you to withstand fatal damage once. Uh, 
Peaches can get overripe and will rot and bestow negative effects, so be careful of that. Peaches inside pots won't ripen, so you should keep peaches that you don't want to ripen inside a preservation pot. On his traps. I mean, unless it's a trap full of money. Traps are hidden under the ground and normally can't be seen, but there are ways to reveal traps. For example, press the A button to attack. If the tile you attack ha attacked into has a trap, it'll be revealed. Try to get through this trap laden room without setting any of them off. Let's go, Transweeper. Good news for you. This is perception grass. This perception grass can be used to reveal all the traps on the ground. Even if you can't see them, you'll still set off the traps if you step on them, so go around them. Reading a trap detection scroll will cause all traps on the floor to vanish. You won't have to avoid the traps anymore, but you can't take advantage of them either. It's a little sad. Launching creatures. Sounds like some sort of Xbox game. Launching creatures, the mature adult thing to do. Don't be left behind and be a kid. Where your cool buddies, right? Right? What grass has the effect of warping you somewhere on the current floor. Feel free to use it on yourself or throw it at the enemy as situation dictates. First use warp grass on yourself. You'll warp off somewhere. This can help you escape when you're surrounded by enemies. Throw warp grass at the target and it'll warp off somewhere too. It can only be used on one monster though. But if you don't want to go anywhere, throw it at a monster. Stomach expander. I'm trying to do the opposite, I'm trying to shrink my damn stomach. Hide pot is an odd item. You can actually put yourself or a monster inside the pot. Uh, first throw the hide pot at a monster. This will trap it inside the pot. But if you attack it or use an item on it, it will start moving again. use the insert command to put yourself inside the hide pot. You won't be able to move for a while, but the monsters won't notice you. 
By the time you get out of the pot, the monsters will be gone. Maybe. By the way, no matter what the capacity left is, if you use a hide pot once, it'll vanish. What's the point of having a capacity then? Life-saving scrolls. Do they taste like lifesavers? A fixer scroll is a scroll that can help when you uh, read it. I'll explain what it will help you with. Fullness is zero, your fullness will recover. This is great when you have no Uno Giddy. Oh, well, I already, okay. If you read it with more than two monsters adjacent to you, the monsters will stop moving. Just like with a paralysis staff, if you poke at them, they'll start moving again, so watch out. Save them. Read this when you have cursed or sealed items. It actually removes curses and seals from all of your items. The scroll is great. Oh, they have to be on the ground first. I don't know. I'll just take the. I'll just take a word for it then. I am fools. Sanctuary. There is a scroll called a sanctuary scroll that's really powerful. By the way, you use, uh, by the way, or but the way you use it is a bit strange. If you place this scroll on the ground and step on it while you're on top of it, monsters won't attack you. If you place it, if you place two on the floor, the one you place first will vanish. Vanish. So be mindful of that. Scroll on the ground and step on it while you're on top of it. Oh, I see. Same. Okay. By the way, ranged attacks like arrows or flames can't be stopped by a sanctuary scroll. What good is it then?
Go nuts for nuts. Sweet nut monsters will swallow items that fly towards it. Every time it swallows an item, it will double the experience points it gives when it's defeated. Feed the items in the room to the sweet nut, then defeat it. If you're unlucky, it'll explode when it swallows an item, so don't get too greedy here. Interesting. Stop thief. Some monsters can steal your items or money a lot. Allow me to show you that now. I'd rather you didn't. That one over there is a monster called Frago. It doesn't attack like most monsters. Instead, it chooses to steal your guitar. Mm. 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 Once Frogo steals your katan, it'll run around the whole floor. You'll have to catch it and defeat it to get your katan. Next is a monster called uh, Zalakluft. This annoying sea lion monster loves to steal items. Like Frogo, you have to catch it and defeat it to get your stuff back. Try to keep your items safe. It's easier to defeat enemies that flee by using projectiles. Try to devise your own way to defeat the monster to get your stuff back. a shield that can repel attacks that steal items or a guitar. If you equip or synthesize that shield, you can rest a bit easier around these thieving monsters. Serious, there's more training. What, there's three more pages of training? Oh my god. Legend says that placing an offering here and praying will grant any wish. That's why I'm praying as hard as I can right now. Please, heal all you. Get rid of her sickness. Oh, she's down with the sickness. Huh? Alright, um, why don't we stop it there? Uh, this is Autopostrophe. You've been watching uh, Shit in the, Rondor the Wanderer on Nintendo Switch. 
Um, well, I suppose I probably should have showed you the game. <laughs> I, I didn't realize that there would be like two hours of tutorials. Um, so yeah, next time, uh, hopefully there won't be like another four sets of tutorials that we have to review. Uh, otherwise, it might take a while before I can even show you anything. <laughs> um, but it's an old-time series. I mean, so th there have been multiple games in the series uh, on multiple platforms over the years. Um, but essentially, it's a it's a dungeon crawler. It's a 2G dungeon crawler. Um, I don't know if it's for everyone, uh, but uh, I think it's one of those games that you can just play, you know, bits and pieces on and off. Uh, you can suspend the game at any time, so you don't have to <clears throat> have to be committed to some giant dungeon uh, in your time that you have when you're playing a game. So uh, I think it's good pick up play material. Uh, it's really, really simple, but obviously there's a lot to it. There's a lot of mechanics and a lot of things to uh, keep in mind when playing. Uh, so it's deep enough, I, I think, uh, you know, if you like RPGs and like a little bit of strategy, then uh, it's worth your time. Uh, so yeah, uh, definitely check it out. Uh, I think, I think you'll like it. Uh, anyway, I hope you enjoyed watching. I will see you at the next stream.